okay so let me share the screen okay uh, beza and amar uh, let us start and uh, since we are saving the recording so uh, other friends when they join later on they can watch the uh, recording and uh, understand the session so uh, what uh, we studied last week is that what are information systems and uh, just uh, uh, as a matter of repeating it recapitulation uh, let me uh, briefly just revise uh, the our first week uh, the introductory session on it first of all what is more important here is that how an information system works what makes an information system to begin with so first of all the first thing which is needed which is available around us is the data anything which we see is a data like uh, you see the numbers the names anything say if i say istanbul uh, if i say uh, uh, turkey like that so this is a name but by saying only istanbul does not serve any purpose because istanbul what either if i say something like in today istanbul is very hot the temperature is very high so now this becomes an information so from data when we add some value to the data it becomes information like <clears throat> if i say sk shehir is a big city and uh, ankara is a big city so when i adding value to the data so ankara is data but when i say ankara big city it means it has become an information i am adding some value to that from value the information becomes a sort of knowledge knowledge now that now we know that ankara is a big city turkey is a big country turkey is a beautiful country like that it becomes knowledge for the <clears throat> based on the data this knowledge when we have knowledge of something we gain certain insight insight here it means certain sort of a understanding that how we are able to manage that information <coughs> how we are able to use that information and knowledge to serve our purpose to solve certain problem to address certain issue it becomes an insight from insight ultimately it leads to wisdom wisdom is the highest uh, 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 order of it like how does it represent you can uh, see it in this way that initially you need first of all we need data <clears throat> data on uh, uh, something we, this is very much important because unless we have data it will be difficult for us to <clears throat> uh, make certain in, uh, interpretation the, on the basis of the data we make certain information this information leads us to the knowledge and from knowledge it comes wisdom that's why we say knowledge is power the more knowledge you have it means that the more information you can process and with that knowledge we attain wisdom the per people the person it becomes more wiser so how does it look like what is data data means certain fact 
a collection of facts, the raw data. If I say some 20, 40, 50, 60, it is raw data. In any organized or unorganized manner, the raw data. But when I organize it in a particular way, suppose I say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or something like that, I have analyzed it, I have arranged it in a particular way. This becomes information. Say, for example, the marks in the, in the, in the class for the students for a particular course. So that is information. From this information, when we arrange this piece of information in a particular way, it becomes knowledge. If, so if I say today that the temperature in Ankara today is 30 degrees Celsius. So 30 Celsius, this is information. But when we say that in Ankara, the temperature today is 30 degrees Celsius, it becomes knowledge. And from where we can see that, oh, it is very hot or it is cold or something like that. <clears throat> that becomes the knowledge. And particularly, when we organize it, when we apply that, that if it is hot, what we should do? If it is going to rain, let us use our umbrella, and that becomes wisdom. That how we can apply that knowledge in a particular situation, in action, how we use our knowledge. These things, <coughs> these things, they become the fundamental part of any information system. To work for an information system, we need that how the raw data will be converted into some sort of information. The system will capture that information and convert it into a knowledge, that knowledge will then allow us to apply that knowledge in a particular situation. So that becomes the information system. There are various components of an information system. Like uh, people, people mean the users or the creators, people, like an information system. If you are developing the information system, you become the developer. If you are using an information system, you become the user of that. Then we need hardware and software. Hardware, the machine on which it is working. Say, for example, if we have, uh, 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 say, mobile phone, this is hardware and the software will be the, the application which we are going to use for there. When we work using a hardware and work on a software, it generates certain data. Either we generate the data using that software or we add that data to the software to work on something. Like in Microsoft Excel, we put our data and make a graph, make a chart, make some table with that data by typing the data in a Microsoft Excel <clears throat> from there. So, and the practice, the approach, how that system will work. This is named as approach. The, the practice, how to do that particular item. Let us see some example of it, that how these things, like in a particular thing, we need, like in computer, we have memory, we have storage space, the hard disk on which our data is stored. So you need all these things to work, whether it is people resources, software resources, hardware resources, network resources, and data resources. For data resources, we need certain storage where that data will be stored. So in computer, we store our data. 
in the banking machine, the data is stored. The data can be stored in two places, either local disk of the computer or in the cloud, like in Google Drive, like, uh, 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 like Dropbox. These are the Google, uh, the, the cloud storage spaces. So we, we store the data. Now, this data then processes through these, through, through these things. The input, the data is input, and when the data is processed, and the output. So if I type a letter, to the comp I will type the input, I will send a letter to Professor Durshun that uh, uh, today in the class, Beza and Amar, they are present in the class. So this is the message I'm typing. The software will make it a message. And then output means either that email will go or I will take a printout and that becomes an output. All these things, the system performance will depend on the control system. That on which, what way the system, overall system is being uh, controlled using that. So these are the important components of any information system. These things they make, we, we need to have certain people to, to manage that information system, to create that information system, to run that information system, and to use that information system. We need certain softwares to work on that machine. Which machine? The hardware. So what hardware we are using for it and the network resources to connect the communication media. Say for example, uh, using Zoom now, uh, we are connected with each other. So those things, they are needed. There are various types of information systems. Basically at the operations level, which is the biggest level, we need those systems, these are called as transaction processing systems. Here the things they are transacted. Say like order processing, if you are giving the order uh, uh, to Amazon, you want to purchase certain item and then you give the order. So that material movement from the factory to the warehouse, uh, from warehouse to the mall, to the shop, and from the shop to our home how the material is moved, the creator who is creating that product. From the product uh, manufacturing plant, it goes to the warehouse, the storage area. From the warehouse, it will go to the particular shop. From the shop, we go to the shop, to the mall, to purchase that and bring it home. Like payroll for the salary purpose, employee record keeping, those things they are. Then once we do this transaction processing system then the higher order are management information system and decision support systems where we take certain decision that if we are to create a product manufacturing unit how that should work if there is a payroll system which staff member will get how much salary on the basis of their skill on the basis of nature of their uh, le level whether professor or uh, uh, associate professor or what, the salary structure will be decided. So these are the decision support systems. And on the top, it comes executive support systems, which are the strategic level, the highest level, say like the, the uh, general manager, the managing director, the CEO, chief operating officer, chief executive officer, these positions, they are the executive positions, the top positions, and they take strategic decisions for the system to work. These things, we use them. There are various types of information systems, uh, like uh, 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 office information, transaction processing, management information, decision support, and expert systems. Let us see some examples that how uh, they look like. For example, the accounting information system. Here, basically, we uh, work on the accounting system that how much money comes in, how it is processed, and how much money is distributed. 
so the accounts the control of finance so you on the one hand you have persons who will be working on that or who will be distributing that and then you have certain procedures that how that uh, accounting information is being processed then we have software like uh, enterprise resource planning erp the full form is uh, enterprise resource planning so those things they are needed for that office automation systems like microsoft office product you have the photocopier machine you have a printer in your you have computer machines all these things they are used so that you can use it uh, uh, for processing you want to write a letter you want to send you want to conduct an examination you want to create a book you want to create a brochure something that those things they are called as the office processing systems which allow us to create certain documents which are very much uh, used by the students by the teachers in any office how we use them then transaction processing system in which say like monetary transactions uh, if you go to atm to withdraw the money that is an example of a transaction processing system so we we put our card into and when we punch our code pass code and the and type the amount how much amount we want to withdraw from the machine the machine processes our request it finds first of all authentication is done that whether i am the right person who is withdrawing the money it asks me the pass code i type the pass code the machine will process the request and will check that how much amount is needed and whether that amount is in the, the machine or not whether i can withdraw that much amount if everything is okay the machine gives us money so the transaction it happened and the data is stored that on this date at this time this much money was withdrawn by this person all the data they are saved and you receive your bank statement at the end so these things though the bank statement the documentation your account opening uh, uh, your your uh, uh, check processing everything is recorded into the system then the another one is decision support systems in which the machine will take certain decision that how in a particular situation we should be working uh the traffic management system is a called of decision support system in which the the traffic system it it makes a decision that okay on this particular road there is heavy traffic on this particular side there is less traffic so the green light and the red light the the automatically the system will uh, take the decision and will inform about it so it provides on the basis of a particular scenario on the partic on the basis of a particular situation the software the decision support system will provide us the opportunity that how the system the person will work in that and this is like uh, uh, in the uh, the the network area where uh, the if the network is high on a particular way that how the system will work so particularly say for transport system if it is a freeway if it is rt transit or that how the data will be processed uh, when we set up the data there can be a heavy traffic of information heavy heavy data entry many people they are connected to the internet at that time so the, the data is traffic is heavy and otherwise the network is light many uh less people they are connected to the network that makes the uh, uh, system so it allocates the resources according to that there and another system information system is used in the hospitals so in the hospitals the patient registration system the payment system laboratory information system where the the tests will be conducted the pharmacy information system where we go and purchase medicine then picture archiving uh, you 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 take x ray uh, those ct scan 
those things they are stored there in the radiology all these things they work on a particular information system and all these together they make the hospital information system when you go for marketing the marketing information system where the people certain product is there and then somebody you know uh, uh, does the marketing give the advertisement on television on internet uh, in the print media we release the advertisement to tell the people about the product and then the uh, uh, intelligent system which says that how the people they are liking the product or not and what should be done to make the product more approachable useful to the people so that more people they will purchase that product so those things they work in the marketing information system these are the expert systems in which the decision is the software tells us that if this is a problem here can be the answer the solution to that that works as expert systems so why these are needed because they work with a very high efficiency and the memory we have a limited memory we cannot remember everything but the systems whatever we input into it they can work in a better memory way and it is highly secure high security that things that's why these are worked into that all these things they are there are these things that particular all these things they interact with each other a user using the hardware and the operating system will work on an application package so all these things together they make a information system processing so there is hardware there is some operating system the operating system controls the hardware and then the a user using an application works on that application to in to process certain information there so these four things the thing they work now comes the then that case then if there is some then then what is software so you need to have uh, 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 you, you are using certain software in the in the in this class uh, uh, i suggest that uh, if you are not knowing it please because you are student of computer science gpt3 it is the latest programming language you make a google search on it and this is very very powerful just very recently last month gpt3 has been released by elon musk his company open ai you can see on the photograph open ai is the company which is owned by elon musk and the company open it is open artificial intelligence and this this uh, uh, gpt3 programming language is very you know that uh, we have various kind of programming languages like procedural programming language uh, like cobol a uh, procedural uh, uh, programming language or object oriented programming oop so there are various types of uh, programming languages and you can see that there are so many billion parameters this programming uh, technique lays and if you tell this software that uh, it wa you want a book it can write a book for you if you tell the software that create a uh, mobile app for you it will create a mobile app for you so that is very powerful uh, in there now let us see how the computers they have changed over a period of time uh, initially in the earlier days we used to have very big size computers very big the whole room will be filled with the computers and these were the the board in the in the year early 60s and you can see these are the uh, the programmers of that time when they were working on these huge machines in the earlier phase there but then personal computers came in 1980s and they become 
more powerful and smaller in size. So the size becomes small. Here you see such a big size, but the memory is very short. Here the size has become smaller, but the power is increased. The latest one is that the quantum computer, which is quantum computer, which has been developed by Google. And they are saying that it is so powerful that a normal supercomputer, if it, it will to solve a problem, if it takes 10,000 years, the supercomputer, which is the most powerful computer as of now we have with us, the, the Saika Moore quantum computer will take only 200 seconds. 200 seconds. So 200 seconds means how much? Uh, around three minutes. The other supercomputer will take 10,000 years. Now you can see how fast this machine is. So the quantum computer, quantum computing is very interesting area. I, 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 I suggest to you that uh, do some research, do some study on quantum computing because this is going to be the future of computing, the quantum. You know, the normal, uh, normal computer, uh, it work on one and zero. One on zero off, one and zero. The normal computing process depends on one and zero. But in quantum computing, it is qubit. It is qubit. So there is no one and zero state here. It is, it, it is the spinning state where the, 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 the electrons, they can be spinning in any direction movement. That is called as the quantum computing. There, if you see the development of mobile devices from the big mobile devices, nowadays we have small and even the foldable mobiles, they have also uh, come up. You can, you can fold the mobile, uh, the weight. So the development there, everything, these things, they have converted this software industry to a very big extent. We need the personnel, the programmers who are working in this uh, field. These are the various types of uh, uh, the personnel which we are uh, needing for developing information system. You need consultants, you need contractors and you need employees if you are working on developing information system. Consultant, part-time person, he will just come, give the consultancy, advise you and goes back. The contractor, we hire them to do a certain job and the employees are full-time employees. The full-time regular, uh, uh, regular staff members of the company uh, to work on that. Now, uh, do you know this person? His name is Tim Kal uh, Kilburn. He's very famous person. What did he do? He has been uh, a contributor to the development of computers very significantly. He was the computer scientist and English mathematician. And oh, oh, he contributed a lot to the, to the development of computers. Then on the basis of that, we need, we have certain applications. The applications can be of two types, desktop based application or web based application. Web based means the cloud based application, which is there. And how this software, the information system will be delivered. There are a series of steps for development of information system or development of software from ideation to the delivery. How does it that? We call it as the software development life cycle. Software development life cycle. There is certain process to do to, to develop a software. There are various models of software development. What is the benefit? The advantage is that we develop the software as per the user requirements. The person who is going to use that software, we need to be understanding the requirement. 
that what I want, I want the software to work in this particular way, that way. So these processes, they are the benefit, the advantage is that the software will work properly. If we do not keep it into consideration, the software may not work properly with that. So this is the circle of the software development life cycle. The first stage is planning. We make the planning. We think of what uh, uh, software will look like, what function it will have, what colors it will have, what shape it will have, like that planning stage. Then analysis, we try to make an analysis of how it will be done, what it will be doing, then designing, how it, it, it should look like, various application, how it looks like. Then implementation, testing and maintenance. These are the various phases of software development. So in planning what we do, we allocate the resources. Okay, here is a team. Uh, like Beza will do this thing, uh, Gulizar will do that, uh, Amar will do that, like that. So we you reallocate the resources. It can be in terms of uh, uh, staff members, faculty, or the material. How many computers you have, you need to decide it. Those things, they are done. The second is requirements. What is my need? What I want to do? That is very important to understand because on the basis of the request of the user, the software will work. Then we do the designing. We create a prototype. Okay, so the person says that I want such a system that when I click on this button, the email should go. So that designing part will come. Then the programmer, the code writer, they will do the software. They will write that code. They will create that software. After that, the software, we do the testing. We give that software to someone so that they do, they check it whether the software works properly or not. On the basis of this testing, we receive the feedback and then we deploy that software, install that software. So installing, deployment, putting it on the machines, whether it is a mobile app or a desktop app or a web-based app, uh, wherever it is, then we deploy that. And once the user, the office starts using that software, that information system, we need operations and maintenance because sometimes the software may not work. There is some glitch into it, some problem comes into it, we need the maintenance people to, to correct that error, to find that error, that why that software is not working into it. There are various models for that. The waterfall model is the most common model for information system development. Waterfall, because it is like from the top, it comes down, 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 down like that. In, in what way? You first need to have the requirement, on the basis of requirement, the next stage will be the design. The next stage will be implementation, then verification. Verification means testing. The testing of this is the verification, whether the software is working properly or not. Verification and then the maintenance, how to maintain the system so that it works properly. This is called as waterfall, like the waterfalls uh, from the top. There is another one method is called as agile method. In agile method, there is a loop. So we, 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 we keep on working, we keep on writing the software and then give it testing and we find that whether it is, it is working or not. If it is working, it is installed. If not, then we make changes into the software and then again work on that. So it is a cyclic model. <clears throat> And so the advantage here is that uh, we need to think that what is the customer, what is the user wants, how it will be changed, how the software will work, what are the various user requirements, the individuals. So we need to add more value to the software, to the information system into that. This is another mo model. It is called as Scrum model. 
in which we we mostly involve the product owner with the team the team works with it and then we give it for a review on the basis of review then you can see the review on the basis of that then the product and it is if there is no change then it is sent to the market if there is some change we again discuss with the team and the team makes the changes into the product those things they go with that then the another method is called as kanban method in kanban method we divide it into various kind of activities to do first we list out all the activities what needs to be done then second we are what we are doing out of that and the third is it it has been done so this this activity it is completed so if we had these eight activities to do out of those eight activities we are doing five and out of five four are completed that way we keep on doing the software information system development into that then this is spiral method here mostly it is the risk analysis the requirement validation the prototype making and how the implementation it will work everything starts with a spiral you keep on going in the stages start with the concept the planning into the center and then have a first type of prototype then go to type 2 prototype then third prototype and then operational prototype and make its design integration etc these things they work with the information system in that way another model is called as v model v v stands for verification or validation v model in which you define the project implement it and test the project so that way it is called as v model and this is the overview in total any information system will have this five steps into it the planning one you you do the planning then analysis on the basis of analysis we design the software we design the software then we implement it software for testing purpose on the basis of feedback then support means maintenance so these five things they are a part of the information system development process so uh, with this uh, today uh, i am stopping the uh, session now and uh, if there are any questions you can uh, unmute yourself and then we can talk okay yes hello beza hello sir uh, oh. i how are you i am fine how are you i'm fine thank you so much i hope uh, the uh, to the uh, uh, the lesson was not difficult it was easy to understand yes yes i understand easily uh, and it was very good example like